Douglas, how did you start writing for young audiences? I, I'm one of the few playwrights I know that came through unsolicited scripts is the way I, I got picked, which unsolicited scripts are just when you write your play, you stick it in a brown envelope and send it off. Mm -hmm. And I wrote play after play over six years. I, I wrote 20, my first play was actually my 22nd play. <laughs> so I was, I used to have lots of other jobs and was writing play after play. My life was rejection letters. I was at the point of giving up when the phone went and it was uh, the Performing Arts Lab in Kent, which is a, a kind of residential workshop um, where you would go and you'd spend 10 days there with writers, directors, actors, and working on plays for young people. And I went down to this um, having no high hopes and no interest whatsoever in writing for young audiences. I looked down on it, to be honest. I thought, um, I thought it was beneath me. I thought it was what people did if they couldn't quite hack it in professional theatre, you know. I, work, I was working part-time in a computer game shop and they were the only young people I knew. No children in my family at that point. And uh, so I worked up this rough idea about a wee boy in a computer game shop and a failed artist in a computer game shop. And uh, I turned up as a hangover and a grudge and a chip on my shoulder. So I that, not particularly playing with the others. And then I had to tell what my idea was. And I told them, you know, hey, it's a computer, what we boy in a computer game shop. And I'd written out, I need to bring a structure with you. And then instead of writing scene one, scene two, I'd written level one, level two, level three, like a computer game. Because I was hung over, I said that when I was explaining my idea, I said, um, instead of saying I'd written my structure out like a computer game, I said, I've structured it like a computer game. And everyone went, what do you mean? Energy bars and people do the same thing over and over until they get it right and characters die and come back to life. And I was like, yeah, yes, <laughs> that's what it is. I'm going to do that. I got very excited about it. The, these actors that were there read out Decaders of Bronco in crazy Brigadoon accents. Everyone laughed during it and then everyone cried at the end. And there was people kind of shaking my hand and congratulating me. And I, I didn't even let them talk to me. I ran out and phoned my mum and on the payphone and I said, chuck those plays, those two, she kept them all in the kind of Graceland shrine, you were afraid to do plays. <laughs> chuck them and I said, it's laughter and it's tears, you know, that's what it is. That's, it's, it's writing about stuff you know about, you know. Incredible epiphany. And something they always say is, you know, writers need to go away and find their voice. It's impossible to find a voice. What you can find is a song to sing that suits the voice you already have. When I was copying Eightborn, Mamet, Tarantino, et al, my voice was rubbish. Couldn't hit those notes. Yeah. But suddenly when I started writing, thinking, how would I keep an audience of teenagers happy? Bizarrely, I could do that. And I found my voice. I found that actually if I write with that in mind, yeah. it comes alive. The thing that makes theatre different to everything else is it has to be alive. It has to be enlivened and alive and sparky and vital. A gym load of bored 13 and 14 year olds, I thought, no, I think I could probably, I could give them something they weren't expecting, I thought, and I could probably keep them laughing and keep the stories going. Writing for a younger audience has always been present in my work. I'm not, I don't always do it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you feel a bit boxed in by something you know, that you've done a lot. And sometimes you need a new a new take on it. And really there's three prongs to uh, my work for young people, is writing for a young audience, writing for young performers, mm -hmm. or writing with young people, mm -hmm. which is, you know, youth theatres and things like that. So how, do, you, do you find there's a distinction between those three prongs in terms of your craft? Yeah, the, the writing for a young audience is much closer to just writing for any audience, I think. In fact, I still sometimes secretly pretend that I'm writing a play for a young audience when I, when I know I'm not. Yeah. When I know that this play is going to go on National Theatre Scotland or, you know, Dundee Rep or somewhere. So I play like If Destroyed True, staged at Dundee and Payne's Blow did that. I was thinking the only, it was dead in the water until I started secretly thinking, right, try and make, like, play to the 15 year olds. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't tell anyone that. And it mm -hmm. never did play to 15-year-olds, but it brought it alive a bit. I always say, 
the, the quality of a, a successful play is something akin to charisma. You know, it's as mercurial as that. Mm. You, you can't cut and paste it. You can't say, right, we've had the charisma now and it's going to take off. It's a, it, it appears maybe between, you know, conception and execution somewhere along the line. What would yeah. you say your other things you need to bring into your writing or your writing craft or skills when you're writing for young performers, say, and what's the difference with, for young audiences? I've only just recently started writing for young performers. Um, <coughs> the first one was probably a play called Too Fast for the NT Connections. And it was, it was different in a number of ways because youth theatres all over Britain didn't, you couldn't really write with a specific Scottish voice. It's more to do with <coughs> finding a story which has lots of different, a great big group of young people in it. Mm -hmm. And I, I made decisions in that where I wouldn't have young performers playing adults. You know, they would be playing people of their own age. Mm -hmm. I've also written for primary school audiences a play called Prom that was very similar. And uh, I, I wrote for a class, a class of 30. Um, you're really stretching the definition of character there sometimes. Mm -hmm. These are just people with a name that say mm -hmm. a line here and there. Um, what I did with those two plays was to try and take a great big cast of people and split them into groups first. Uh, and then within the group, give each character a different dynamic. Um, the other side that I was talking about was writing for writing with young people, yeah, which would be, that. I've written with a few youth theatre projects and things like that, which is really about facilitating and just letting them write without and then reining them back in. My question I was coming up to is what are your the key considerations that you, when you're writing for a young audience, do you, do you take up, um, forward in, in any project? Sort of, you, you once talked about humour, and, and now you're talking about not teaching. I think, it's, I think it's about telling the truth. And you can only tell the truth from your own perspective. It's no different from being any other type of writer. You know, you, it's kind of autobiography. Mm -hmm. I can remember very clearly what it was like to be that 13, 14, in between age. One foot in being a child, one foot in being an adult. And my, the book of my life falls open at that for some reason. I write about that. I don't try and write about kids today, who's kids today, you know, <laughs> because I'll never get that. I'll never be able to do that. I'll never be able to keep up with them or get But those kids today probably have those moments. It's exactly the same. No, well. Nothing has changed, you know, if you're writing about the feelings of it. Mm. I try and write about, I put a me character in it and I try and make sure people are kind of, the characters are kind of normal-ish. And I try and make sure that the play is fantastic, that the, the story is a story, that it has a story that people can follow that's quite quick. Mm -hmm. um, all theatre audiences are clever on the, the play, but a young audience is super clever. The, these guys are just, their brains are just match fit. You know, they can't be any hanging about. They get it. You know? mm -hmm. So just keep it moving on. But the emotional heart of it has to be us, what we, how we felt, and what you know, heartbreak, that type of heartbreak that they that they're going through. Mm -hmm. You write about that. I, I don't try and catch up with what they're going through, you know, because then it becomes a them and us situation. You know, you you thinking they do this, they do that, they won't understand your references or all that stuff, but it's, it's, it's a mess when it gets to that. As soon as a playwright's thinking of the audience as them, they're in trouble. You know, playwrights should be writing for us. Um, you mentioned that Oberon are publishing uh, an anthology of your plays for young audiences. How did that come about um, yeah, and, and what does that mean to you as a writer? It's the, the this collection of um, my plays for young people is the thing I'm most proud of in my whole career. A, a, the a package arrived yesterday of all the plays, and I, I, I couldn't be more proud of it. You know, because I, I think it's because I, I consider it a really hard thing to do to write for a teenage audience, and um, and to have those plays there 
that they're, they're all being published anyway, but in a collection. It came about, I think I'm, they republished a couple of them, Decaders of Bronco and Helmet and whatnot. And I met some of the publisher, publishing people at the festival last year, and we got talking about it. 